Happy Handwriting Day! Today we have seven steps to help you learn how to analyze your handwriting and the handwriting of your friends, which makes for a neat party trick. Also, you can be very accusatory and, you know, <laughs> really classify people based on, you know, mildly scientific stuff. Before we start, you might want to jot down a couple sentences so that you can follow along with us. For each of the seven steps, anything that falls into the medium category represents balance. There's not a lot of that in either one of our handwritings. M more in yours. Okay. <laughs> Examine the pressure. That's step one. Light equals timid and heavy equals aggressive. You know who you are. Step two. Look at the baseline. That's how straight the line is. The straighter it is, the more goal-oriented and the more of a planner you are. A wavy or meandering baseline means you're someone who goes with the flow or might be indecisive. An upward slope is an optimist or an ambitious person. And a slight upward equals someone that's hopeful. Sharp upward is someone that's impulsive. And a convex line means somebody with lots of interest and passion, but they tend to dwindle with time. And a drop at the end, like our son, is a poor planner. Step three is regularity of letter size. Very regular is a person that's a very hard worker with great concentration. Irregularity is instability or a creative or artistic temperament. Step four is a slant. A leftward slant is someone who is emotionally repressed or inhibited. I did collect some handwriting samples while I was working on this and I got one handwriting sample that demonstrated a leftward lean and I'll probably put that in in post. I'm not saying that you're emotionally repressed, but You'll know who you are. A straight up and down slant is someone who is a critical thinker and probably has a reserved nature. And most people's slants to the right, the further it leans to the right, the more emotional, sensitive, and or enthusiastic you are. A changing slant is a changing temperament. They're the moody people, or as we moody people like to say, adaptable. Step five, zones. Okay, the mid-zone letters are letters that do not extend to the upper line or below the line, like E, M, R. Um, and they represent how we feel about ourselves and our everyday lives. A small mid-zone equals insecurity. Large mid-zone, pride. And uh, the upper zones are letters that extend to and above the upper line, B, T, and L. They represent ambitions and dreams. Long upper loops would indicate a person who likes to dream and be challenged intellectually. Short upper loops is a more level-headed person. The lower zone represents our attitudes. Triangular loops is an obstinate person. Step six, line spacing. Neat, consistent spacing would represent an orderly or clear thinker. Extremely wide line spacing is probably an observer and not a joiner. And irregularity, again, means inconsistent or feeling oriented. Okay, word, spa word spacing represents our relationships with others. Wide equals somebody who likes to think before speaking. Extremely wide is someone who may have trouble getting along with others. Step seven is style. Embellished capitals is someone who is probably educated and maybe a little conceited. And undersized capitals means that you might have some self-doubt. There's a lot to be said about the way someone writes their I, but I don't have time to cover all of that here. I will just tell you that Mark's eyes, again, represent an obstinate nature. <laughs> you know who you are. Happy Handwriting Day. So that was Handwriting Day. And hopefully you learned something. And if you did study your handwriting, I'd love to know if our tips were accurate for you. So leave a comment below. Also, I mean, if you really think about it, this is a fun thing you can do with people. You know, pass it around, see what you can say. Because you all know what you think people's handwriting says. But it's always nice to have some confirmation. Bye, guys. Thanks. <laughs>